You can set classes to style elements on a website by using CSS like this, but Webflow makes it much less ugly and much more accessible. But you already know about classes, so rather than do a class class class, we're going to look at handy global classes and other naming conventions that makes it faster to build in Webflow and makes handoff to clients much easier, so stick around. First a refresher on classes and global classes. When I add a class to a button, such as button, that button is now given a class of button. Now I can add a class variant on top of that button, such as light or outline, and in this way add variants to that base class. But with global classes, I can set an attribute or set of attributes and then use that global class whenever I want that attribute used. For example, I'll add a class of opacity 50 to an empty div and I'll change the opacity to 50. And now whenever I add opacity 50 as a class to an element, it's going to give that attribute to that element. Global classes are the kind of thing that you want to have set up in your website, but you probably don't want it showed anywhere on your website. So it's much better to set up a style guide page and then add any global classes into that page. So what global classes might you set up? Well, here's some that I use. Hidden, with display set to none for when you want to hide a section or element that you want to make visible at a later stage. Center align, with text align to center and auto left and right margin set for when you want to put a certain element or text div in the center of the website without centering and aligning all divs with the same class. Animate in, with any simple animation added, so you can decide which elements you want to animate in when they appear. Opacity 80, or 60, or 40, so that you can adjust certain elements to look lighter or fainter than others. Float up, with a hover effect added of it moving up, for items or cards that you want to float up when you hover over them. And those are global classes, and so anytime you think you have a handy class that you might use throughout the website, you might want to set it up as a global class and hide it in your style guide. Now let's look at the other kind of handy classes that are used in every Webflow website, combo classes. So again, you might already be using combo classes for elements such as buttons, where you set a base button style, and then you add variants on top such as light, dark, or 90s. But you can add the same principle to other elements across the site, such as for headings, paragraphs, text boxes, and more. For headings, we can set a variety of different sizes from extra small all the way to extra large, and then this way we can quickly test different sizes on the fly to design and adapt as we build out different pages. Same with paragraphs. Add a paragraph class and then does it look a bit big? Set up a small combo class. Or does it look a bit small? Set up a large combo class. Now we're not going to set up large as a global class, as a large section, a large heading, and a large paragraph, all need different size properties. So for this reason, when you set up global classes, make sure they're classes that can be used universally across the site. And for text boxes, we can add a variety of different sizes as combo classes, and again, try out different sizes to see what fits. And if we need a style that isn't there yet, we can simply add it in. So that's how I use global classes and combo classes across a Webflow website. And again, this system is easy to use for clients too, because all of the information is kept inside the style guide. So let me know if this was helpful, or any other thoughts on how you use classes inside of Webflow in the comments below. Or if you have any recommendations for future videos, feel free to pop those in the comments too. Otherwise, thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.